I'll be honest with you guys, when I first saw this thing, I thought it was a submarine. It looks very, very similar because it's got a rounded top and, you know, a very World War I, World War II inspired nose that was similar in, you know, first glance to what a submarine looks like. And honestly, I think it begs the question, will we ever get submarines in War Thunder? I think... I think Gaijin has said no. I think they've said flat out no. I know World of Warships said flat out no. And it really makes you wonder why the hell that is. Because I think, you know, there hasn't really been a good sub hunting game or a submarine game, you know, in the World War One, World War II era in quite a while as far as video games go. But ladies and gentlemen, this is not a submarine unfortunately i really got excited like i got so excited when i saw this because like oh my god oh my god submarines right I found it interesting that it was a russian submarine and not a german submarine but it was neither it was the g5 motor torpedo boat the most widely produced soviet boat of the second world war so i think by this time everyone's kind of just like you know accepting the fact that it's not necessarily war thunder ships Although people have found that like on the War Thunder website from years ago, people like, remember the screenshots? I remember looking at these screenshots um, in like my first week or two of playing and they had like these uh, big Japanese ships, big American ships and like, this is how the ships are gonna be in the game, guys. This is definitely what's gonna happen. And then, you know, over the course of development, I guess the reality of the situation came in that maybe they don't have the manpower, the resources, or the engine cannot handle it for whatever reason. Uh, big ships have been pushed off for a while. That's like that's no news, but I feel like we haven't had any uh, ships news or <laughs> boats no boats news boats news in a bit. Um, so it was kind of like covering the bullet points for those who are new or those who are not caught up on the subject. Ladies and gentlemen, the development of the G5 torpedo boat began way back in 1928 under the direction of the famous aircraft designer. Tupolev, one of my favorites. This small and nimble vessel was created to combat large enemy ships. Real quick, this small and nimble vessel was created. The, the dev blogs truly confuse me a lot of times, I'll be perfectly honest. They say a lot of stuff and then you're like, but am I reading like a Wikipedia history article or like a really well written article on some dude's website that's like a World War II armchair general? Or is this like about a video game? Because like, if this ship was designed to combat large enemy ships, well, where, and there's not going to be anything outside of maybe AI-controlled large enemy ships, why is it in the game other than the fact, oh, it's the most widely produced? Things like that always always confuse me about these dev blocks. Her main role was to approach the enemy ship, fire off two torpedoes, and quickly retreat before the enemy's deck artillery turns you into a pile of duraluminum and wood splinters. So what happens if it's a smaller ship that's just loaded with small arms that could turn you into you know, a pile of dura aluminum with wood splinters. That's my question for you. The G5 was equipped with two AM-34 aircraft engines designated GAM-34 and specifically adapted for use on naval vessels. In general, these engines were in extremely high demand in the pre-war Soviet period because players will already be familiar with these engines in the TB-3 and MBR-2, two of my favorite derpy Soviet aircrafts as well the engines were basically identical to those that were placed in the SMK tanks in the experimental SU-100Y with that big old naval gun, basically the box tank. A powertrain of two of these engines allowed the boat to reach 51 knots, which is over 94 kilometers per hour. The boat was a little over 19 meters long and had a crew of just six. It had no artillery armament whatsoever, save for a DSHK machine gun. So you got 12.7 millimeter machine gun and torpedo launching abilities, but no capital ships to shoot it. The little G5's main firepower was in the two 53-38 caliber 533 millimeter torpedoes that were interesting in that they were dropped off torpedo racks. And these torpedoes were not launched forward, but instead they were dropped behind them in the rear of the G5 in the direction of the boat's travel. So basically, you see a ship, you drive at it, drop the torpedoes behind you, and then to get out of the way of these torpedoes, you have to immediately change course, you know, right, left. I don't think stopping at full stop would be a good idea. Um, over 300 G5 boats were made. The boat turned out to be not particularly effective at combating enemy vessels, but, were wise, but was widely used as a support boat and landing craft during the Second World War. 
Officers and seamen who served aboard G5 boats received a number of awards for bravery and valor, including Hero of the Soviet Union Star Medals. In War Thunder, the G5 torpedo boat is a reserve vessel in the USSR naval tech tree. This small vessel is very vulnerable to enemy fire, and the G5's armament is insufficient for destroying other craft quickly and efficiently. But that isn't essential. What is essential is moving around quickly and getting direct torpedo hits. After all, the very same torpedoes are used on the Project 183 boat, which we've already described to you. These torpedoes can take out any foe on the battlefield, never mind the tiny contemporaries of the G5 in Rank 1 battles. Very soon, the dangerous little G5 will rush into battle in the oceanic expanses of War Thunder. She will be available to all participants in the Naval Warfare Closed Beta Test. Come enlist in naval battles now. Do, if you read between the lines on this dev blog, all I'm reading is this thing was produced a lot. It's a reserve tier. It's not going to be able to do shit unless you manage to pull off a direct torpedo hit. Other than that, you've got a machine gun. And don't worry, those boats that you're going to be fighting against are going to have more machine guns. And they're going to shoot you faster than you can shoot them unless you become a god at torpedo hits. It's almost like rocket artillery in War Thunder tank battles. Now rockets are, are, if you're good at rockets, you can tear people up. Rockets are a very, very good weapon. The problem is for War Thunder and for the vast majority of people who play War Thunder is it's a very skill intensive weapon. It's not point and click like Soviet APHEBC. It's not a T-34 that you can just roll around in and get a nice three kill game easy, no problem. You know, there's not too many people running around in their Panzerwerfers, you know, the half track with the with the big old German rockets on top. There's not too many people rolling around the little T60 chassis with the Katusha rack on top of it. Now, those things can destroy enemy tanks, but it's a skill-based system. The interesting thing about all those vehicles is in some cases they're premium, in some cases they're main tech tree, but at, at no case are they reserved tiers, which means everybody has to start with them. I am I am looking forward to War Thunder boats. I will say that right now. Is it what I wanted? Not necessarily. Am I still looking forward to it? Will I still play the shit out of it? Um, yes. I'm not entirely sure if I'll get tired of it or if I'll fall in love with it. Because guess what? I haven't done it yet. Nobody's done it. Well, I mean, some people have, but they, am, they haven't been able to tell us about it, right? But if you read between the lines on this dev blog, all I can read is this boat is going to be hard to play and it's not going to be very good for the average user for the vast majority of users it looks like a submarine it's not a submarine if it was a submarine it probably have a much better chance of survival so i just got to know why the hell is this a uh why is it a reserve tier like reserve tier naval tech tree like it's it's not a, like i could understand if it's like a premium or you know like one of those cheap golden eagle premiums because you know maybe it's weapon systems you know and the uh, the armor on it all that kind of things equate to like a reserve tier battle rating but it should be it shouldn't be something that people are encouraged to and if not needed to use if you're going to grind the soviet tree for boats it doesn't make any sense to me. Now, there is one thing, like, I think the redeeming factor of this boat is its speed. 94 kilometers per hour, 51 knots. That's pretty cool. But if you think about it, think about vehicles like the M56 Scorpion or, like, open-turreted, open-topped vehicles. Um, you know, in War Thunder, all you got to do is spray a machine gun and you can wipe out certain vehicles in War Thunder. Right, and they're kind of like the glass cannons, like they they're tank destroyers, open turreted tank destroyers that fire from distance and have very powerful guns. But I mean, this isn't like destroyers in World of Warships, where like you can take out a destroyer where you're very very fragile, but you launch torpedoes and you're gonna hit slow, big, lumbering, moving, large capital ships. There aren't gonna be targets like that. I don't. I, I'm at a reserve tier. I think anybody would be hard pressed to land a torpedo hit reliably. You know, like one out of every 10 torpedoes launched, you're going to hit someone and you're not going to die like where you have to YOLO charge. This is a YOLO charge. This is the Leroy Jenkins of Soviet boats, guys. You have to go straight at the enemy, launch torpedoes, hope he doesn't move, and then pull away, exposing more surface area to shoot at at a closer range. Because 
you're turning laterally. You're going to be perpendicular to the enemy air or the <laughs> the enemy aircraft, the enemy boat, right? It's, I don't know, man. This is like this is the craziest thing. It looks awesome. It looks cool. I bet it would be a lot of fun to drive one of these in real life, and it would be so much fun. See, this could be one of the most fun boats in War Thunder if, if ladies and gentlemen, if you had big ships to fight. I think this would be one of my favorites because it's speed and hitting power with the torpedoes. Now, when you're aiming at other smaller boats who are nimble and fast, how the hell am I supposed to hit them with a torpedo? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Baron, and I'm excited for War Thunder boats, but I'm genuinely confused as to why this thing is a reserve tier boat. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think of War Thunder boats, War Thunder ships. I think all of us are going to try it out. But I think most of us are going into it pretty skeptical. And a lot of us, truth be told, are going into War Thunder boats butthurt. Because we read those we read those news articles or, you know, those little screenshot show-offs years ago. Almost four years ago now saying War Thunder ships where, where they're showing off the Yamato and, you know, you know, all these carriers and cruisers. And good lord. I mean, when you look at the Oleander class cruiser and War Thunder, that thing is a piece of, that is beauty. It's a beautiful ship. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts. Let's get some discussions going, and I'll see you guys in the next video.